Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you a review of the Bayer Dynamic DT1770 closed back headphones. As always, I've got my notes right here and let's start with build and comfort. So these are built really, really well. Uh, the construction is mostly metal. I really feel like these could take a heck of a beating. It is really nice that they put a detachable cable on here and it's also really nice that like the DT1990, one of them is this stretchy phone cord style of cable. I also really like the connector on the end because you don't have to worry about connectors like this on the actual headphone where contacts are going to be bridging whenever you're plugging it in and out. So I do like that. It means that the plug inside the headphone is going to last through more cycles being plugged and unplugged if you do that a lot. Uh, the pads could be a little bit deeper this way and they could be a little bit taller like pretty much any other Bayer Dynamic. I feel the same way about their pads. Uh, but this does come with two types of pads. It comes with pleathers, as you can see here, and also some velour pads. And these aren't the same as your standard Bayer Dynamic velours because the back end is actually sealed, not perforated. Uh, but this headphone is very, very, very isolating, especially with the pleather pads. At the cost of being pretty heavy and having a lot of clamp. And if you do not get a good seal, if you do not get a lot of clamp on them, even if they're just kind of loose on your head, it's going to drastically change the sound. You want to have a good seal with these. So that clamp is unfortunately there to stay. Now let's talk about the sound, starting with sub bass. Uh, it is very, very well extended. It goes very deep. It is very clear sub bass, uh, but it is boosted. It is very, very, very boosted. Uh, bass heads are going to love this headphone, but it is boosted to the point where the sub bass actually gave me a headache. And I've got like a, a sub system in my car, and this was way too much bass for me personally. But if you just are all about bass, you might like it. The rest of the bass and mid bass still overkill boosted. Uh, very clear bass and mid bass. Doesn't sound super um, bloomy or anything like that, but it is definitely very boosted. And it can definitely be overpowering at times. Uh, mid range is just super distant sounding, especially compared to that low end. This is going to be a recurring theme. Bass kind of overpowers everything. Um, vocals are very distant and sound kind of grainy, but it's hard to tell because they just sound so distant because we have some massive recesses uh, as we progress farther up into the frequency response. In my notes for lower treble, I just put LOL because... Where is it? And the upper treble is peaky but still extremely dark when compared to the bass. Not looking good so far. Um, I will say though, the treble is still very resolving, but it's just lacking in volume. Uh, if you have a treble sensitivity, this might be nice. And if you just really don't need lower treble or mid-range that much, you may enjoy them, but that leaves you with just bass. So going back to my previous point, if you just like bass, you might like these. Um, they have reasonable dynamic range, but it's nothing to write home about. And soundstage is kind of meh. Not impressive, but not terrible. Uh, things can sound really distant, but they never really sound wide. And there's definitely a clear difference between distance and width. Vocals sound distant, vocals do not sound wide. But some things like guitar strings occasionally will separate out into space. And with that separation, not bad. Uh, it's just hard to differentiate things over that bass. Uh, and then imaging is reasonably directional, but it definitely gets hazy at times. I tried playing some games with these, and I could kind of tell someone is somewhere off in this direction, but I couldn't really pinpoint where. It was just a little bit rough. But sometimes in music, I'd get a really clear center image, uh, a really clear direction on where something was coming from, but it, it could definitely be hazy at times. So, in conclusion, DT1770 Pro. Uh, very well-built German-made headphone, really can only recommend this if you're an absolute bass head. If you're a total bass head, if you love bass, you'll probably like these a lot. Um, if you care about really anything else, I would avoid this headphone at all costs, as much as I hate to say that. I wouldn't even wear them to film this video and monitor my microphone because it was just so unpleasant. I'm wearing the Mod House Argon actually, and if you want a better headphone that still has bass but has everything else, I would check these out because the Mod House Argon is pretty great. I will have both of these linked in the video description. And that's really it. This is a pretty short one, but I don't have much to say on these because honestly, it wasn't a very pleasant listening experience. 
I heard that the 177X Go has been drastically improved over these. That may be the case, I can't say yet, but I'm going to hopefully try them at some point in the near future. So guys, hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a like down below and a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want early access to reviews like this one, you can check out the Patreon link in the video description. And don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Until the next one, guys. Peace. Back in the days when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore.